Women in Translation, gotta be one of my favourite genders. So August is Women in Translation Month, where we talk about books written by women, not in English, that have been translated in English, for us to enjoy. So today I'm going to be talking to you about a few books that I really love, and also at the end I'm going to give a little bit of self-critique, a little bit of self-analysis, an explanation as to why I've read certain, I haven't read certain books and why certain authors aren't on this list, so stay till the end for that. Before we get into it, I want to let you know that you can get all the books from the description down below from bookshop.org. Bookshop.org is a company that works with small independent bookshops to help them get a little bit more money whenever you buy stuff on bookshop.org. So get the books from there in the description down below or get it from your local library. So all these books are going to be in no particular order apart from the last one. So the first one is The Travelling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa. I really love this book. I think it's just sweet. It's got a cat. I love cats. It is, uh, it's mindful. It's, I wouldn't say it's demure. I wouldn't say it's cutesy. I think it's a very, you know, hard hitting novel if you think about it towards the end. Uh, but it is just lovely. It is so, uh, I love when people write from a cat's perspective, uh, especially Arakawa really gets the cat. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, there was a spin-off book to this which gives a little bit more about like the human side and some other cats. I don't think the spin-off of it is as good as The Travelling Cat Chronicles, uh, simply because I think The Travelling Cat Chronicles is one continuous story and you grow and learn with these characters, both cat and human. So that's why I highly recommend that one. Uh, the spin-off book you can probably read afterwards at some point. Uh, it, it wasn't amazing in my opinion. It was an extension and part of the Travelling Cat Chronicles, but I do think, you know, if you're going to read one, read the Travelling Cat Chronicles because it was just my, my, not mind-blowingly good, but just really good, a really lovely read and a really, like, hearty read is the best way I can describe it. The next book is The Hen Who Dreamed She Could Fly by Sun Mi Huang. Also, I would maybe put The Dog Who Dared to Dream in here as well by Sun Mi Huang. I, I, the books aren't interchangeable, but I've read both of the books kind of in this. No, I read The Hen Who Dreamed to Fly first, then quite a lot later I read The Dog Who Dared to Dream and both were just like... <sighs> Man, that's kind of how you feel reading these books. It's... it is just heart-wrenching. Uh, the Hen Who Dreams Could Fly is the book that is the best known. I was just like, this, this cover was so sweet. Uh, and then you, I read this and I, I and, and uh, huh? It is just, uh, both books. The Dog Who Dared to Dream is also like this. And I'm just like, Huh? Huh? That's, that's, that's all I can say about this book because it is, it is like, it's gonna rip your heart out reading these books. It's just like, it's, it's hard to put a book like that into words beyond that. It is moving. It is like, not very mindful. <laughs> uh, Genuinely great books, extremely well written, not very long, so they're like, they pack a punch and just, wow, just wow is all I can say, really. I should, I, there's one more book I think that is similar to these by Sun Mi Huang, which I've not read, so I actually might read that, because oh, I was researching for this and I was like, ah. I've not read that one yet, so I might read that too, but The Hen Who Dared to Dream Sugar Fly and The Dog Who Dared to Dream is just... Dude, just read them and you'll know what I'm talking about. Like, there's no, I can't even put it into words, just the way you feel reading these books. The third book is The Vegetarian by Han Kang. Uh, you've probably read this book or you've probably heard of this book. This book was like everywhere when it came out. It won everything. When I was working in a bookstore, which was maybe a year or two after this book came out, everyone was still buying this book. It is, it, it's 
like, it's out there. If you've read a Han Kang book, I think I've also made another video about Human Acts by Han Kang uh, quite a long while ago, to be honest. Uh, you know Han Kang's writing is unique, it is out there, it is, uh, it plays with reality and the surreal and the fantastical. It is just a, such a well-written book. It is very, it's not for the faint of heart, I will say, if you like are squeamish or you just don't like like super dark subjects, may I would avoid this book. That's my warning for you. Uh, if that isn't for you, maybe don't read this. If you feel like you can handle it, do. It's not a very long, it's like very short. So if you can handle it, read it. But I will say if you, you know, it's not for the, those of you who might be a bit squeamish, a bit faint of heart, a bit like, you don't like stuff that might trigger you, which I totally understand. That That's completely fine. That is your prerogative. You know, you choose what you read. That is okay, you know? Some people just don't want to. I, to be honest, I went into it blind. I kind of picked up the book because I saw a bunch of these customers buying the book. And I was like, oh, well, I'll use my 50% discount and I'll buy it. I didn't, I, didn't read, I didn't do any research into it. And I was like, oh, okay, well then. So, uh, incredible, incredible book. Uh, just if you feel, I don't want to say the faint of heart, it feels a little bit harsh, but if you feel like you might not be able to handle it, read the blurb and stuff, read the reviews. Uh, yeah, fantastic book. You know, do avoid it if you feel like. Kind of like Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. Some people are a little bit, buy it. Yeah, if, if you feel like that, maybe don't read this book. But it is a, genuinely a brilliant book. Han Kang is a brilliant writer. Maybe read Human Acts instead. Uh, also, a little bit, oh my god, type book, because it is set uh, during the uh, student uh, revolts or, um, you know, riots against the military police in Korea. But military government in Korea. So, yeah, still not for the faint of heart, but maybe a little bit less... You might feel a little bit less uh, when reading it, but yeah, Han Kang, fantastic, the vegetarian, just, what a book. <laughs> you thought I could make a video about women in translation without mentioning my number one, my favorite, Hiromi Kawakami. Do you think you could get away with that? Because you can't. Strange Weather in Tokyo by Hiromi Kawakami. But the first Hiromi Kawakami book I read, the one that I recommend to people to get into Hiromi Kawakami because it is the most, like, neutral in the middle book. Maybe not the best one of hers, not my favourite, but the first one I read and the one I want you to read. Uh, you know, love, learning about yourself, just, just. Yeah, that's that. That's the good stuff right there, Hiromi Kawakami. Uh, I would again, like I said, this is like an, this is the book I would say intro to Hiromi Kawakami. Then you move on to the other things, maybe uh, the Ten Loves of Mister Nishiro. Maybe you move on to the Nakanao Thrift Store. Then you know maybe you wanna you feeling brave. Maybe you wanna go to Records of a Night Too Brief. That might be a little bit. Ooh, that's, that's a bit spicy, but you know, maybe. Uh, Hiromi Kawakami, I just... I can't, I just, it's Hiromi Kawakami. So I had to put Hiromi Kawakami on this book. That's why I put a last in the list, so, so I could keep a suspense for Hiromi Kawakami. So those are the four books I'm recommending to you. I think you probably noticed a pattern, that's what I want to talk about. All of those books were from East Asia, specifically Japan and South Korea. Now, I want to say I don't just read books from Japan and South Korea. However, when I was trying to put together my list for this, I realised a lot of the books I thought were translations simply weren't. They were authors from around the world. They were, you know, female authors from India, uh, part, various parts of Africa from the U, well, not the US, but from different parts of Europe. But they all wrote their books in English. So I was like, oh, 
this hasn't been translated. I thought, okay, cool. That either either the author is diaspora, so like myself, they are live up and grew in the West, so they wrote in English, or they just decided to write the book in English. Uh, one, well, there's probably various reasons for why they did it. Now, Aaron Ditty Roy thought it would be the best way to get to the widest audience, and also because it was a language she could use to express what she was talking about the best. Uh, some of the books are older, so it is a bit of a colonial thing, where they felt maybe writing in English was the preferred standard way to write, the better way to write these stories. Uh, and also, purely because that is the most accessible thing for me. Uh, to be honest, books get translated very late into English. I don't think we realise how late we get books after they've been translated. Um, it's sometimes years, like 10 years. Sometimes books are just never translated. There were authors that you might like, there were Han Kang books that just haven't been translated into English, at least from what I could see. So the books just don't get translated, which is sad. And you know, if you are someone who likes an author, and you want more of their books translated, you can maybe reach out to the publisher, maybe you can find another group of individuals who really like that author, who want more of their books translated, I think that would be great. And also, it's great for translators. Translators are just underpaid. I mean, I worked in the media uh, area for a while, and we didn't pay translators very well. Uh, it might be different in publishing, they might be paid a lot better, but from my experience working with translators, we're not paid very well, unfortunately. That's just kind of how it went. So, you know, hopefully it will benefit the author and the translators, which is great, because, you know, everyone needs a job, needs a job, and needs some money at the moment. We're in a cosy lives globally. But yeah, I think that's the self-critique of myself, where I clearly thought these, more of these authors, like, there's, there's an author who I want to put on the list, from Kerala, from where my family is from in India, but they wrote the book in English. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't write, I couldn't put it on the list. So uh, if you have suggestions for me down below of books, particularly from female authors, that aren't written in English, but have been translated into English for me to read from around the world, obviously I have plenty of books from Japan, and South Korea, so give me other parts of the world, please. Uh, please, please comment them down below. I would really love that. Even if it's like a French author I've not read. I don't, I've actually not read a lot of European literature. Uh, uh, South America particularly. South America is an area I have not read a lot about or from other than like football and history. But fiction is definitely something I need to pick up for in South America. So if you have those, please, please let me know. That would be highly appreciated. So yeah, please comment those down below. Reminder, you can get all the books from the description from bookshop.org, a company that works with local bookstores, get a little bit of a kickback when you buy from them, or just buy it directly from the bookstore, or get it from your local library. We all love libraries. So thank you for watching. Uh, read some great books by authors from around the world particularly women, because it's Women in Translation Month. Like, subscribe to the video, friend a family member, and I hope you read a great book today. Especially the ones I just, just told you to read about before.